vaccin COVID-19, c'est une solution importante pour protéger Tetou et puis pour mettre fin à la pandémie. Ça. Mais, vous êtes capable de question sur la sécurité vaccin. Ces mêmes mesures de sécurité sont utilisées pour tout l'autre vaccin. C'est surtout que vous suivez pour le vaccin COVID-19. Il y a des dizaines de milliers de monde qui ont participé à l'essai du vaccin COVID-19 et le résultat a prouvé que vous avez des sauf. Depuis le Sato, il y a plusieurs millions de monde, différentes races et ethnicités qui prennent le vaccin. Et puis c'est un petit malaise tout petit qui est gagné. Je te prends le vaccin pour me protéger tête moi, famille et patient. Les tout pour l'arrivée, pas hésiter. Fais la médecine confiance. Prends le vaccin. Je vous remercie les viewers around the world, viewers in Massachusetts and viewers all over the social media. My name is Ronald Bernard and it's a pleasure for me to present the show called Integration. Integration is the show that brings to you from Mosaic Public Media with MCTV. It's a way that we can create our platform to have different people with different backgrounds. They can talk about either businesses, either problem in the environment, resources, so the communities, they can be aware of what's going on and how they can access the resources. So today, I am, I am glad to have with us Adelsa Mendes, who is the business assistant manager. Welcome, Adelsa. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And Sherelise Shari Isaac, which she, she is the grant program coordinator. Welcome, Sherelise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, both of you, uh, to be on the platform of MCTV. And the conversation we're going to have, it's a way to let the public understand what uh, the organization is doing. And we're going to be talking more about the agency, which is uh, Brockton Redevelopment Authority. So how about right. you give us a background about the organization? So uh, Brockton, Brockton Redevelopment Authority is a quasi-public agency uh, that operates uh, uh, in Brockton with the city of Brockton. We manage different programs and uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, opportunities and uh, public service, we also behind the redevelopment, um, uh, the the whole redevelopment uh, in the city. Uh, so we do have uh, um, a variety of uh, programs and uh, uh, public service that we work with. Chara can add a little bit more uh, on it. So yeah, I run the mm -hmm. grant, um, CDBG public service and public facilities um, grant in the city of Brockton. And that's more for so I work more with the nonprofits mm -hmm. in the community, and we our goals are to address the needs regarding say, sustainable homes okay. and um, economic development. But all of the public services have to serve and benefit the low to moderate income community. Okay. Before I go directly in each of you, what are you doing as you know um, your job, your title? Uh, so, the organization, is it a public organization? Is it a non-profit? What, what type of an entity? So, um, we work as a non-profit as well, but as I described at the beginning, it's a quasi-public agency. Okay. So, we do operate in both sides. I, okay. I believe that's the best description. That's the best description. That's good. So. Um, you help um, the, let's say your job as a business manager, assistant manager, you work with like small businesses. Yes. So um, what can you say about like how is the situation? I know it's a little bit like uh, vague, not specific, the question, but uh, what can you, what do you see as issues, challenges of small businesses in Brockton? Um, so um, my position as a small business manager uh, was created 
uh, precisely to work with small business and help identify those issues. Mm -hmm. There is a variety of issues, especially when we're talking about uh, um, um, disadvantaged communities and uh, a community with a uh, high number of uh, uh, immigrants, black-owned business, women-owned business. Uh, so uh, it's uh, the issues that we see in general across the country that just been uh, is surveyed with the pandemic mm -hmm. and uh, um, includes uh, uh, employee retention, includes uh, um, uh, having uh, cash flow for the business, including uh, impact on the revenue, the, the, uh, the increase, decrease of the mm -hmm. revenue. And uh, um, in general, there is other uh, issues that exist pre prior to pandemic. Okay. A lot of business need uh, assistance to understand it, the, how they have the passion. Mm -hmm. They come, they open a business with a passion uh, and uh, they, they are good in what they do. But the business include no, not only uh, the uh, business side, but the whole process of operating and the, mm -hmm. uh, the administration process of the okay. business. And that's where we feel that business lack um, the knowledge and lack the information. Mm -hmm. And that's where we can be uh, of uh, some assistance as well, as well help them connect with resources available. Okay, so, um, well, I, I have a small business too. So I see like uh, sometimes in the, let's say in the minority community, what happens is that uh, business leaders, sometimes they have lack of you know, information and what type of entity they should create and the tax part of it, like, you know, and how to find capital to move um, either like, you know, increase their capacity or do anything. So with COVID, I see uh, many of the small businesses, for instance, the paycheck protection uh, program, it were a little, it was challenging for them to yes. get those kind of funding. So, um, do you at the um, agency provide assistance in terms of you know business plan or helping them with you know? Uh, I know you mentioned about resources, so if we could be a little bit more specific, like if it is business plan and how those business can reach out to you guys to support them. Yes, so um, the program, uh, uh, the, Bro the Brockton Business Assistance Program, as I said, is designed to connect business with the resource. Mm -hmm. So we help business identify uh, where are the source uh, that can help them with the, the uh, needs that they have. That it will include the business plan, we include, the, uh, uh, understand the whole taxation process, we mm -hmm. uh, even like the accountant, uh, um, it's just uh, such a variety of needs need is and we in terms uh, to provide this uh, help we partner with organizations uh, namely uh, SCORE okay. that is a, a group of uh, retirees um, uh, CEOs retirees that uh, help business uh, and uh, they cover assistance with business plan but also a variety of resources because they bring uh, such a, a, a great um, um, they, they have a lot of knowledge in different uh, industries, okay. so that will help business with the process. Uh, but mainly what we do, we connect them with the resources. And uh, um, I mentioned SCORE, but we partner also with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. We uh, um, partner with the Office of uh, Small Business uh, Administration. Mm -hmm. uh, we um, partner with all organizations that have uh, uh, resource, that have assistance that they can provide to business. We do advocacy in terms of uh, better assist the business in Brockton um, and how they can best approach uh, how bro business in Brockton can take advantage of the programs that they have. So we, we uh, provide workshop mm -hmm. webinars and a different uh, uh, inform information session um, in terms of uh, helping business get the information and uh, also understand the process and be able to take advantage of those resources. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, Charlize, um, so during COVID, uh, how access to grant, how, how difficult or um, was it easy, like, you know, funder, did you file like funding to help support the programs? Um, so during COVID, mm. there were many applications that came through. Good. Um, 
But one one issue we find is that um, kind of similar to what you were speaking of, there mm -hmm. are people who aren't sure of how the process works okay. or how to even qualify. So they have the right intentions, they want to serve the community, but they're not set up as a 501c3 or mm. um, they're not registered with the appropriate agencies in order to qualify for federal funds. Um, but there was a significant amount that was given out to the community and we were able to serve um, with additional funding from HUD to be able to address the needs due to COVID. Okay, so uh, you mentioned that there were some, they were not 501c3. Mm -hmm. So y the small businesses you helping, um, it nonprofit, for profit, all type, or you have a specific criteria for a certain type of business? Mm -hmm. So for the CDBG grant um, for the public services and public facilities, mm -hmm. it's such a small amount in the city of Brockton that we've limited it to only 501c3s. Okay. So all the viewers, you're still listening to Integration, and Integration is the show that brings to you from Mosaic Public Media. We have the show to inform you about what's going on in the community and resources and leaders in the communities that are doing a tremendous help in order to change the community. So we continue with the dialogue. We have with us Adelsa Mendes, who is the business administrator, business assistant manager, and we have Cheryl Lees, who is Isaac, who is programs coordinator. They both work for Brockton Redevelopment Authority. So there is a question that I should have asked in the beginning. When I look at the, the name, so Brockton Redevelopment Authority, why we say Redevelopment Authority? Um, the names uh, speak for itself. Uh, uh, the, um, we behind the uh, the whole uh, city redevelopment. Okay. Um, it's more Chara and I can specifically talk about uh, certain programs, but we do have uh, other people that manage uh, other types of program that is behind like uh, um, housing projects and other projects that are more. Uh, uh, that is actually the foundation of uh, okay. how build and uh, um, improve the community. Mm -hmm. uh, the the department, the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, is behind all those big projects. And uh, uh, again, the main goal is really uh, uh, help uh, the improve the community in general, mm -hmm. in, in improve the livelihood of the the people in the city of Brockton. Yes, and um, so. As a manager, um, do you like? Is there a number of businesses you've been serving, connect with so far in the community? So I work with small business in the city. Mm -hmm. I work with uh, all the small business in the oh. city. Obviously, if you ask me if I've been able to help all the small business in the city, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> <It's>, not something. <laughs> and I've been in the office for a this year. Is a, this yeah. is a brand new position. But it's been very, I, I'm trying my best to connect with uh, all the small business in the city. I've uh, been promoting like networking events, mm -hmm. um, in, uh, so with the uh, Haitian business, the mm -hmm. business, uh, Hispanic business. So uh, I try in general have events for uh, partner with black owned business and uh, um, the idea it's just uh, come to uh, TV shows like this yeah. and uh, be able to put out there that we exist, that we in Brockton to assist the business in Brockton and uh, uh, we are willing to work with uh, um, uh, organizations and partner with uh, uh, an organization that mm -hmm. uh, is uh, willing to provide assistance or um, wants to navigate with us the, the system and the process to better uh, assist the business in the community. Um, going out there, I do a lot of uh, knocking the doors, go oh, like wow. door to door to introduce myself to business. Mm -hmm. I try to be in all the community events possible. It's always an opportunity to connect and network. Uh, also, a lot of business that I've been able to assist and work with, 
uh, they been putting the word out there. So I have That's business true. in Brockton reach out to me. But I also mm -hmm. have business coming from Boston, coming from uh, um, uh, Medford, <laughs> coming from other cities because they are uh, hearing good uh, uh, referral from business that mm -hmm. we assist. Uh, if you ask in terms of uh, the amount of assistance that we are able to provide, um, it's been huge, especially in terms of uh, uh, noticing where we get, where we start. Mm -hmm. um, uh, bring in the business assistance program, tell the business there is someone in the city that is here to work with you, mm -hmm. to help you um, go through this difficult time and be able to take advantage of everything that is out there that is available for you. Um, so it has already a big impact Good. just for business to know. When I go to business mm -hmm. and I introduce myself and I tell them without providing any assistance, just introduce them and tell them my title and mm -hmm. what I do, they already feel excited. It's just, uh, uh, it's uh, kind of uh, bring some hope to them yep. that they know that they have someone that they can rely or count on in order to uh, get to know more information. Doesn't mean I have all the answers, so yep. I'm out there looking for answers probably I have um, uh, I'm in, uh, in a better position to connect with those organizations uh, mm -hmm. because I'm with the Brockton Redevelopment Authority so I'm out here in meetings connecting with all the big organizations like uh, Small Business Administration, Massachusetts Growth Capital Corporation so I get the information uh, directly from them and I bring also the business concerns to them uh, a big concern that we have is like help business in Brockton as part of uh, uh, a community where we have a large group of black owned business, mm -hmm. uh, immigrant owned business, and I would say like the minority owned business, uh, mm -hmm. how we can help them take uh, advantage of the resources available. And we noticed that business in Brockton were left apart or because they didn't have the information or because they mm -hmm. don't understand the process or because the bureaucracy of the process that make mm -hmm. them kind of give up in the middle. So uh, having someone that can help them navigate the system and also advocate in terms of how the program can be more uh, beneficial or more efficient for business in uh, Brockton, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, Adelta, uh, in COVID, we talk a little bit about COVID, but I believe during COVID, the minority business, they were more crushed during COVID. So, um, in your experience, while you in your position, how the you know help has been going on to support them? Either I don't know if there were many businesses closed in Brockton. So, how you guys have been helping them in order either I don't know to reopen or to maintain staffs, all of that. Um, if you could talk about it, that would no, sure. the the whole um, uh, the the whole reason for the program is this is especially to see how we can tackle this issue, mm -hmm. especially help save the business. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we all know the small business are the backbone of the uh, economy okay. of the cities. And uh, there is uh, also, um, uh, in terms of, in general, I believe that the country understand mm -hmm. the, uh, the power and the, uh, how important small business are. So save small businesses, save the economy as well. So um, it's... Uh, it's actually I important to uh, understand how we can uh, navigate the process with them mm -hmm. and uh, be be helpful for for business in general. But uh, uh, it's uh, it's been really uh, hard for a lot of small business. There is assistance available, but are the business prepared to get those assistance? Because okay. when we talk about uh, uh, state federal money, so there is certain requirements for you to qualify for those uh, uh, assistance. Mm -hmm. So that's where we find that uh, um, there is a need for uh, uh, more assistance in helping business yeah. be prepared, that have like a, a surface that mm -hmm. shows that they are a business. Yeah. Uh, it's not like, uh, you know, there is certain requirements. So when you apply for a grant, they want to see if you file tax. They want to yeah. see, you know, how you operate as a business. Some of the grants, they were looking for your revenue. They are looking mm -hmm. for 
uh, uh, your expenses as a business. Yeah. So uh, 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 talking about grants specifically, but in terms of loan, there is even more requirements for you okay. to, to get a loan. So um, that's where our assistance and be able to provide technical assistance to business, work with business in a cohort system, those are all part of the plan that we have in terms of provide the real assistance to business to get them prepared so they can go out there and be able to qualify for those assistance and qualify for when they apply for a loan. It's the reason it of a lot of uh, information and uh, education in general in terms of get business prepared. We uh, in Brockton, in, uh, we had uh, 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 an assistance available for small business uh, in August 2020. We uh, were able to assist uh, um, a certain number of business in Brockton, uh, I believe 133 business, wow. could be more than that with a $10,000 grant, $10,000 okay. grant. Uh, the, the intention is to give out more, mm -hmm. but the, we didn't, the business that apply couldn't uh, meet the requirements mm -hmm. for the application. And we're not asking for anything out of, uh, it's like normal requirements mm -hmm. that you supposed to, uh, is expected to be asked to you and you're supposed to have as a business. So um, my work in this one year, it's been like how I can prepare and help business to understand that and be able to be prepared to qualify for grants opportunity. And we've seen result, uh, results already. Right? Recently, we will help business apply for the Massachusetts Growth Capital Corporation that it was um, a grant up to $75,000 for business and uh, were available for the no applicants because that was the second round of this grant and for the inclusive grant the one that is called the inclusive grant that will give priority to minority owned business woman owned business and uh, also business on the getaway cities so we did we help a lot of business apply and we uh we wish more business could qualify, mm -hmm. but we seen that I work with business that probably they wouldn't qualify if they didn't get the assistance that we provide them throughout the process. Mm -hmm. So uh, I understand that uh, uh, it's all the reason need for more education and information in general in order to help a business succeed and be able to take advantage of the resource. That's very good. Uh, well, that's great work, guys. Uh, so, Cheryl, about the grant, like uh, when you review the grant, mm -hmm. uh, I believe it's one part of your job um, when we had the conversation earlier. So, um, what, what do you see the 501c3 more likely lack of in terms of fulfilled uh, criteria? So, one of the big things that I see is people don't answer the question. Like, okay. <laughs> um, some people just add information and like add extra documents, but just if you answer the question, you should be good. Um, uh, aside from the, the mm -hmm. bare minimum, like registration and all that, um, there's also a lot of times people have an idea, mm -hmm. but they don't have a plan. Okay. So it's important to be able to explain to us what it is you want to do and how you're already working towards it. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be, um, since our grant is only a limited amount, mm -hmm. we need to know that you're able to afford it if we're, able, if we're not able to give you the full amount you're asking for. So mm -hmm. um, if you ask for a certain amount and we're not able to give you the full, mm -hmm. um, you should already be proving that you're, you've been applying other places. Okay. that you have donors who have committed funds and show proof of that. Um, a lot of times people don't include that mm. and they assume it's a, a given or they had no idea that's not, even something they should be doing. Okay. So um, when you talk, you said uh, when they apply, they don't fill out the, f they don't like put all the information on the form. So what type of like questions? Is it like a qu question that requires, I don't know, check the box or they have to fill in with information. Mm -hmm. So some of them are literally just checking off and then um, some of them could be like a narrative. Mm -hmm. um, they don't go into much detail about what they're actually going to do with the funding. Okay. They explain the need and what their organization does, but they don't it really explain what the project or the activity that we're going to fund is going to actually do. Mm -hmm. Or um, there's several questions that usually like 
tend to be the ones that mm -hmm. um, people don't really answer. And that's in terms of the finance part. Mm -hmm. um, and our main, for the public services and public facilities, the main um, goal we have is to serve the low and moderate income households, mm -hmm. but also to see that um, we're not just funding duplication of efforts. Mm -hmm. So there, there have been several cases where we have um, after school programs or Similar, youth programs yeah. mm -hmm. apply and we already fund several mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. but most applications that come with programs like that say they there's none in this community mm -hmm. so that shows us that you didn't even bother to, to check yeah. and see who you can work with in the community which is a very big red flag mm -hmm. um, but just certain things like that okay as my experience in uh, the nonprofit world I see in terms of managing, when we're talking more about grant, um, would you suggest that, I know it's a small uh, organization, they, let's talk, like me, I have English as a second language. So the language might be a challenge for them in terms of, you know, convey the information that um, you, you, the grants require. This is one of my assumptions, and I see that like uh, when depending on the either the database they have and you know sometimes they don't really um, I mean in the you know the minority community if we talk about more immigrants so it's a little challenge about that. Would you recommend uh, for them to have you know more training in grant search, grant writing, and stuff like that, that could help them? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, there's a website called, this is, we don't, we're not partnered with them or anything, <laughs> but it's called nonprofitready.org, I think, or com. Um, but they give free training for nonprofits. So they teach you how to fundraise, they teach you how to create a grant proposal, they teach you everything. Mm -hmm. um, so there are resources available like that, but they're usually in English. Um, but if they can even identify one person in the organization to do the training and explain it to each other, mm -hmm. um, that would help a lot. And um, like in the city of Brockton, if somebody's interested, they're always welcome to meet with me and I could break it down with them or um, address whatever issues might come up while they apply. As okay. Well. Okay. They can come to you and you can help them. But have they, like, if someone, for instance, or an organization get um, denied or a grant, you guys give feedback of, you know, what needs to be improved, what, any suggestion, do you do that or is it something that it's too overloaded? Mm -hmm. So it depends on how many, <laughs> how many apply. If it's, like last year we weren't able to due to capacity, mm -hmm. but this year we possibly can. Um, unfortunately, one of the things I see is a lot of minority run nonprofits show interest up front mm -hmm. and I offer them to me to take advantage of whatever resources are available mm -hmm. but then they like disappear they don't they don't come back so I we want them to apply <laughs> we want them to meet with us and show us like what it is they need so we can address those needs um so it's not a matter of like oh you'll get in trouble if you show <laughs> that um you're not set up properly or um registered officially um but yeah, they're always welcome. Okay, because the listeners, they, I, I would like them to understand uh, when we have this kind of you know, shows, we have you um, guys who are the representatives of those entities. It's, we're trying to bridge the gaps, the gaps either in information, the gaps in terms of either resources or connection, where to go and what to, they should expect. Like you just explained. Um, if in the process they need some help, like they can reach out to you guys and uh, you, can, you can help them. So Adelsa, let me come back to you. Um, so in terms of the project um, uh, for Brockton Redevelopment Authority, what's, the, what's are you working on now and what is the vision in terms of the, your part in, as a manager, where we want to go like? So the goal is uh, help the program grow. Uh, we actually, <clears throat> I'll bring one more person 
to the position uh, uh, have a, we're gonna have a business assistance coordinator that will start soon but the idea also is be able to uh, provide information in um, uh, different uh, bring the language uh, capacity I do speak uh, Portuguese Kivir and Creole Spanish and I say always I have good ears for French because my husband <laughs> speaks French and my kids speak French but uh, I would love to uh, the idea is also in the future maybe I have someone that speaks the Haitian Creole the idea is, is really grow the program but I want to let people know that there is uh, they should be out looking out there also for assistance available that is part of the information that we put out there they should visit our website the Brockton Redevelopment Authority uh, I'll leave here also my contact for uh, business in Brockton mm -hmm. um, they con can contact me directly to uh, my cell 508 Eight one eight one seven seven zero. You can leave a text message. Always provide information: your name, last name, and the name of your business. Or um, and I will reach out to you as soon as possible. I do receive a lot of phone calls. I try my best to reach out back to you in like uh, forty eight hours. And depend on what the, if you are working on a grant application. Obviously, I will get back to you uh, uh, as soon as possible, the same day or the same minute. Um, but check out our website. We have there a list of resources available um, I would recommend some uh, uh, that website that you should sign up for like hello Alice like uh, um, hello Alice uh, H E L L O uh, Alice uh, A L L I C E uh, mm -hmm. you should sign up because they have a resource nationwide they always come out with a lot of grants opportunity just apply you know it's a lot of people applying but um, uh, put out there your information about your business identify your needs answer the questions properly and you may have a chance check small business administration Massachusetts growth capital corporation a lot of business in Brockton need the website so there is the impact our digital grant we also looking to become a small business technical assistance work di directly with Massachusetts Growth Capital Corporation and be able to give you more information and more assistance possible uh, but you should check uh, their website um, and uh, learn about the programs that they have available all the uh, organizations uh, that I mentioned here they have a list of resources available for women owned business resources available for uh, minority business and for small business in general General, do your homework as well and if you have any question you can always reach out to me and if I don't have the, one, the answer I will work with you in order to have uh, find the answer that will help uh, your business um, and I'll, I'll try my best to always uh, update you about the grants and assistance opportunity available for business um, we're looking to put out the a second part of the fund that we put out in 2020 for business that I told you business weren't prepared to uh, a lot of business didn't qualify because they didn't finish the application they didn't uh, uh, fi uh, provide us what we requested uh, I feel that now business are in a better position to apply so look to be assisting a numbers of business uh, with the grant soon We're, we are thinking in ten thousand uh, dollars for a business in Brockton so get your paper ready it's like it's not a lot it's basically we're looking for your tax you need to be register as a business and uh, we may ask you for uh, a budget of what you're looking to do with the money that you're gonna get and we want to see also that you use that money properly for the reason that you said and it will have an impact in grow your business or sustain your business um, so there is a lot of information out there and we uh, I'm here as a, your business assistance manager at the BRA at Brockton Redevelopment Authority as a Brockton business assistance manager to work with the business of the entire small business in Brockton also try to join some organizations there is like the greater Brockton uh, minority owned business association recently created um, uh, under the umbrella of the Cape Verdean Association uh, that is working as uh, um, as part of the community navigator pilot program created by the small business administration uh, try to reach out to them and see how you can join that organization um, and uh, uh, there is also a numbers of uh, organizations that you can join try to join the Metro South Chamber of Commerce I'm talking for the business in Brockton in the South area but um, if you listen to us in any region it's always good to join your Chamber of Commerce because that's a place that you can get information and assistance so um, I uh, just want to ask business to uh, 
um, you know, uh, go outside of what is their normal um, routine and look for information and look for people that know the information uh, mm -hmm. that you will get. You will learn it that there is um, a lot of resource out sure, there. Sure. There is a need of more resource. There is a need of more money, more assistance for small business. But there is already some that exists and business are not taking advantage of it. Okay. Um, so we are at the end of the show. Um, just one final s s word like you want to say before we closing the show. Charlize? <laughs> okay. So yeah, um, like Delsa hinted at earlier, the Brockton Redevelopment Authority does many things to address the needs of the community. That includes the Home Partnership Program, the lead rehab program. So if you feel you have lead in your house and you live in Brockton, it's a use it or lose it grant. So mm. make even if you think you have it and it's not a possibility, just apply and they'll check for you. Um, and then there's also the homeowner rehab program. Um, that program, there's a quite a long waiting list, but if you really need to fix your house, um, it is an option. It's just there might be a wait. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the first time home buyer program. Mm -hmm. um, you can live anywhere, but you would have to buy a house in the city of Brockton. In Brockton. And all of these programs are all to benefit low mod income households. So um, some people think they have to be millionaires to buy a house or rich, yeah, yeah. but you, you don't. There, these programs are available, so we should take advantage of them. Perfect. I would add the two other programs that we have, business related. We have the facade loan mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, um, an assistance available. Uh, we call it loan, but there is no payment on it. We will just have a lien on the property. Mm -hmm. But it's just such a great opportunity for business to improve their storefront. They okay. can get up to uh, $57,000 for this program. Uh, and uh, and uh, you need to own the property, the commercial property, okay. to be able to apply. We have some uh, uh, loan and programs available specifically for business in uh, the downtown area. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the kitchen fresh to loan that is also such a great uh, uh, loan for someone that is looking to um, you know open a restaurant or open a bakery mm -hmm. or you can take advantage of the program to build a full industry kitchen so um, there is uh, um, a lot of opportunities there that we are available to work with you I, I, I know sometimes the process looks intimidated but you need to be patient be real with us because uh, the money is available mm -hmm. there for you to assist you and uh, we together will find the best way to uh, help business take advantage of it so uh, reach out to Brockton Redevelopment Authority visit our uh, website uh, you can uh, sign up right for and get the information on first hand um, so we we there in Brockton to to work with uh, with the community and to help the whole process of uh, uh, becoming Brockton a more um, uh, uh, vibrant city a more welcoming city uh, we're looking also to welcome new business to brockton if you're looking to open a business go to brockton <laughs> and for business in brockton take advantage of the brockton seed of champions app that's the app that is available for business in Brockton that you can just uh, own it. You can take ownership uh, by claiming your business on the app. Claim your business on the app. Find your business. If you don't find, send an email to list my uh, uh, local business and or reach out to me. I will guide you throughout the process. But we need business to sign up for the Brockton, um, Brockton uh, Seed of Champions app. There is an app design for you to learn about the city and the services available in the city of Brockton. So all the viewers, it has been a pleasure for me to present the show Integration. My name is Ronald Bernard. I'll see you for another show.